On the third floor of the Flowers Building, you can find student journalists who follow in the footsteps of those who began uncovering the stories of Duke University over a century ago. Founded in 1905, the Chronicle has stood as a beacon of journalistic excellence and witness to the ebb and flow of campus life. Through decades marked by cultural shifts, societal upheavals, and the march of progress, the Chronicle has reported on moments that defined Duke and in turn shaped the minds of the students who contributed to its pages. The Chronicle makes Duke a stronger university. This is a tale of dogged reporters, passionate editors, and the unsung heroes who toiled behind the scenes to bring the stories to life. Their voices, captured in ink and pixels, echo the pursuit of truth and the unwavering commitment to excellence that defines the Chronicle. My name is Ann Pelham, and I graduated in 1974, and that was the year when I was editor of the Chronicle. It was the fall of 1970, and the seniors had been part of the silent vigil in 1968. They had witnessed and written about the takeover of the Allen Building in February of 69. They had been part of other protests, including war protests in 1970. So their definition of what the Chronicle should cover was very broad and they were very engaged with national politics and they were very patient with the Greenhorns who showed up from Greenville, South Carolina and had had none of that experience and really wanted to learn. So we found out that Duke was going to open a junior high for the children of the faculty. Nobody was paying any attention to it and we were able to flesh it out, um, write about it extensively, basically demonstrate that the university really hadn't done much homework. And then when the faculty met, the academic council met to consider it, they, they had really relied on the Chronicle to find out about it. And the faculty objected to the idea and considered it, many critics considered it racist, isolationist. So that was a wonderful opportunity to speak truth to power and demonstrate the value of a robust student newspaper. And you're trying to help the university be a better place. I'm Scott McCartney, class of 1982. I was a journalist for 40 years at the Associated Press and at the Wall Street Journal. My experience at the Chronicle was life-changing. I found my career, I found lifelong friends, I found my future wife. I grew up at Third Floor Flowers. Maybe the most impactful story we did my year was a report card grading the football coach, who was Shirley Red Wilson. The sports department had every football player do a report card on the coach. They all did it. The coach graded out at C minus, but what was really devastating were the comments that they had. The story was 100% on target, and the athletic department admitted that but they begged us to hold it because it turned out the day we were planning to publish was the day that new recruits were gonna be on campus. We decided we're journalists, we're not gonna bow down to pressure. Anyway, the football team ultimately won. We printed the story, they fanned out at all the distribution points at 5 a.m., took all the bundles of newspapers, threw them in dumpsters, and the recruits never saw the story. What I learned from that was distribution is really important to a free press. I'm Craig Whitlock and I graduated in 1990 and I'm a reporter at the Washington Post and I was editor of the Chronicle in 89 through 90. I had more fun at the Chronicle and learned more in one year as editor than any other job I've had since. One of the most memorable stories during my year as editor, there was this person who was a student, or at least they thought was a student, who was posing as a member of this French banking family, but turned out to be some imposter. So we did a story that this guy, Maurice de Rothschild, was, was in fact under investigation by Duke Public Safety, not just for passing himself off as somebody who wasn't, but he had gotten some loans and lines of credit from the Duke University Credit Union. And Maurice was being sued because he hadn't paid back several thousand dollars in loans. 
This imposter had really ingratiated himself with people at high levels of the university because they thought he was filthy rich. And they thought he and his family would give a bundle of money to the university. So for the rest of the semester, the Chronicle proceeded to step by step unmask who this imposter was. I felt like we had a real connection with the campus that year because they were all just dying to read the next Maurice story. And I was very proud that it was the Chronicle who figured out the full story. The university said they didn't know who this guy was. We were the ones who figured out, the reporters on staff. My name is Sayward Darby. I graduated in 2007, and I am the editor-in-chief of the Atavist magazine. I don't think I would be wearing them at all without the Chronicle. And I think that, you know, the Chronicle taught me the essentials of journalism. You know, some people might call them the basics, but I would really call them the essentials. You know, how to be a good reporter, how to take detailed notes, how to craft a story, how to check your work, how to be ethical about your work. And, and I do think that the lacrosse scandal in particular was a trial by fire and forced a lot of us to grow up in real time. We went from, you know, being a really, really good campus newspaper to suddenly covering the biggest news story in the country and every other outlet in the country was on campus covering it. But also, you know, I think the thing that was really important for us at the Chronicle was, first of all, to be as utterly fair as possible. You know, we weren't suggesting guilt when it had not been proven. Um, we were trying to tell the story in a very straightforward way because the way we saw it, and I think the way most ex students experienced it, nobody really knew what to think at first because there was a lot of misinformation, there were a lot of rumors, but really there were just a lot of unanswered questions. And so in our coverage, we really tried to reflect that reality. And then also as editor-in-chief, I thought it was really important to be a public face for the paper. And so, you know, it was really important to me to represent that we were a student organization that had been thrust into a very professional uh, place and we were really rising to the challenge. Hi, I'm Matthew Griffin, class of 2022. I work for Bloomberg News and I was editor-in-chief of the Chronicle's 116th volume. I'll never forget the first, maybe it was two weeks of the COVID pandemic, right after Duke told students that classes were moving online and the Chronicle was the busiest it had ever been. We were frantically calling administrators and students. I was calling international students who didn't know whether they'd be allowed to stay on campus, where they'd be in a few days time. Because we had this real sense of how important it was that people at Duke have the information that they, they needed to stay safe and to make the right decisions during this time of really extreme uncertainty. We wrote slice of life stories about what it was like to be on campus during COVID. We interviewed interesting members of the community and there's a certain freedom there that really helped me see that journalism is the best job in the world. It is a license to be curious, to ask tough questions and interesting questions, to learn the things that you've always kind of wondered but never had a reason to ask. And I just couldn't be more grateful that I got to experience that for the first time at the Chronicle. I'm Mila Serjati, editor of Volume 118. So much has changed at the Chronicle in my four years at Duke, but the core values remain the same learning to lead, pursuit of the truth, and building lifetime friendships. Over the last few years, we've gone digital first to meet our readers. As they evolve, so do we. We're keeping our focus on telling the stories our readers care about, with the belief that future students and staff will want to know about their community as deeply as we do. We also do all of this with less money than previous generations, and we do it completely on our own, with no funding from Duke for 30 years now. Even as our industry rapidly changes, we feel we can find new paths to sustainability. As I graduate and move on to pursue professional journalism, starting with a summer internship at the Wall Street Journal, I'm certain that the Chronicle will be here for future generations.